Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are another Sunday morning, and we pray that the word of the Lord will teach us and will give us some comfort and strength to continue with the situation and the life that we are having to live in uh, these circumstances. I will be focusing again in the Gospel of John this week. Uh, we'll go uh, same chapter again, chapter 14, as John is revealing us something um, that is uh, of vital importance, which we need to understand uh, when it comes to uh, the God that John is speaking about. So if you uh, have your Bibles, please go to chapter 14. We will be going from verse 15 and then we will continue on. A little bit of recap of what I spoke with last week because uh, it connects with this week indeed. Um, we were in the first 14 uh, verses of chapter 14. John, uh, John is revealing Jesus, how he's trying to comfort his disciples. It was a situation where they were, their heart were troubled. And Jesus, right at the start of the chapter, says, don't let, be, don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God, the Father, but also trust in me. And then within that framework, he's, he's teaching them, he's revealing some truths about him. Because he believes, and it is the truth, of course, that should they know who Jesus really is, then those truths would strengthen their faith and then they would have this triumphant faith which will rise above all the malice, about all of these um, abandoned feelings, this ill feeling that they might be feeling, uncertainty that the, 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 the teacher, their friend, their, um, their Lord that was with them for such a long time, now he's just leaving them and they're going to be abandoned. But Jesus strengthened, teaches them to, to dwell in this faith and dwell in the truth that he's giving them. And if they do so, they will find comfort. They will find comfort to know that Jesus has gone there and that distance, that um, journey that he is taking, it is for their good. They will find comfort that he is making a place there for them. But now... Um, the truth of that is that such comfort that Jesus is speaking about excludes the time of his departure from the time until he returns. So all of this time was his to the Father and um, not returned back again. What are the believers doing? How are they being comforted? How are they communicating with Jesus? He's not here. And this is where John continues with um, the further truth of who God truly is. His tremendous plans of redemption that God had already pre predestined, that he predained all the truth and the plans that he would not leave us as orphans. And now John here speaks about a spirit of truth, a spirit of truth that will be dwelling in us. Hallelujah. Before we continue, I'll just say a prayer. Please turn your, in your Bibles to the Gospel of John, and then we will read together after I pray. Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you that we could come to your presence with that assurance, O oh Lord, that you are in our hearts, you dwell in us and around us. And Lord, that we can be assured and we can feel your presence, even though we are in our own homes Lord, you are with us. I pray today that as we listen to your word, Lord, that you will um, enlighten our hearts, open our minds, open our hearts, and may we receive the truth of your word. May we understand, and also by knowing your truth, Lord, that we may find comfort and peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, I read from verse 15 of the Gospel of John, which is in chapter 14. And I'll start at verse 27. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth 
the world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show them, show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Then Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words who hear, these words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. And all this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocates, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful, what a wonderful promise and what a wonderful word indeed. So we see here John presenting another big theme, if you like. He comes with what we know the third person of our triune God that we believe in. So in many parts of the Bible, you pick up a lot of the characters and um, the uh, roles that the Holy Spirit plays in the believers and in the church. But right here, um, in this translation, we have advocate, spirit of truth. Um, but if we look into the actual Greek word, which is parakletos, uh, probably I'm saying it wrong, um, it comes um, where we translate it pretty much uh, a word as a comforter, counselor, advocate, helper. Um, but for now, it is sufficient to know and see Jesus' concern, how he is concerned for his disciples and the arrangement that he has made to help them during the time that he is absent and that he is introducing this um, beautiful theme, if you like, that it progressively develops as we read further on. Um, Jesus is now teaching of this triune God, is teaching of um, the importance and how God has played his act of redemption. One God in three persons. And I think one of the greatest uh, focus on this passage would be uh, where it says that I will ask the Father and he will give you a counselor or an advocate to be with you forever in spirit is the spirit of truth. And the biggest theme, if you like, is that this spirit will not only be forever dwelling with us and in us, but through the spirits will be also the means where the Father and the Son will make their dwelling into the heart, into the life of the believer. So that is the tremendous truth that John is revealing now um, to us, uh, the wholeness of God, the, the tremendous truth and glory of this glorious God that we have and we worship. Right at the start, um, John was keen to uh, explain to us how God the Father revealed himself through the Word incarnate, through his Son. 
and then um, the work that the Son has done for the redemption of mankind. Jesus went at the cross, he paid the price, he was the only one who suffered, he was the only one who had to go to the cross, he was the only one to be the way um, of this redemption through the through the cross, the tomb and resurrection, and return to the Father. And in return, as we learned last week, that um, He is the way for us. He is the way for us to go to the Father, to have a relationship with this tremendous God. And today, John continues to assure us that the next part is the Holy Spirit. The third person of this triune amazing God. The Holy Spirit by which not only will it reveal all the truth to us. Not only will it enable us to dwell, for God to dwell amongst us and in us. But also by which means God the Father, God the Son will make that dwelling in us. And this is the tremendous truth. This is the, tr the very exciting news that John is trying eagerly to share with us. And what, what a great, great revelation that is. Jesus promising, I'm not going to leave you orphans. I am sending you the Spirit. And through the Spirit, you will know that I'm alive. You will see me through the Spirit. Because that Spirit will teach you of all, all truths. Now, this aspect of God dwelling amongst men, amongst his people, has also been one of the concerns that the Old Testament um, uh, addressed and also um, had to discuss. For instance, uh, when the first temple was dedicated, um, from King Solomon, who built the temple, and if you have your Bible, you can always go. You you can always go there in one King chapter eight verse twenty seven, and here it speaks about um, the dedication of the temple of King Solomon. Um, but this is a beautiful verse that it's it's verse twenty seven. Although they had built this beautiful temple, and in that time it was one of the glorious temples known to man. Um, but this is what it says. But will God really dwell on the earth? The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. How much less this temple that I have built? So it was this concern. They understood what a tremendous and glorious and um, big God they had that they were worshipped, that we had that we were worshipped. And it's such a God that even the heavens cannot contain you, O Lord. The heavens that you have created, they, they are not big enough for you because you are a glorious God. And how would it even be possible for a temple such as this that we have built for you to come and dwell amongst us it's impossible it just cannot be understood cannot be comprehended but nevertheless this is the beauty of our god nevertheless even though um, that the structures and the buildings that men have created cannot contain god nevertheless God chose to come and dwell amongst men. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that tremendous? And if you read the story, you, you will see that when the presence of God descended on the temple, all the people that were there, they simply could not stay on their feet. They had to fall down with their faces on the ground, praising the Lord because his presence was so powerful. It just gives us a remark, a little glimpse of how tremendous our God is. And such news 
the, the, the prophets, the people of God, they, they rejoiced. They were so excited of such perspective that God was going to come and dwell amongst them. And prophet Ezekiel, he, um, he says that, sorry, the, uh, he speaks of um, this intimacy with God. He says, my dwelling place will be amongst them. I will be their God and they will be my people. God has promised that. Um, and it is it's recorded, you know, by other uh, prophets. Um, Shout and be glad, O daughter of Zion, for I am coming and I will live amongst you, declares the Lord. It is the news that the truth that God is speaking through the prophet, through his people that he had anointed, telling the people around that he has decided to come and dwell amongst them. And then when we go back to the Gospel of John, as I said in the, a couple of weeks ago, John does pick up from um, the, the Old Testament. He, in verse 114, he claims that statement. And he said um, that this was fulfilled in the incarnation, historically, in the incarnation of the Word. Um, and in 114, it says, The Word became flesh and lived for a while amongst us. John is, is trying to tell everyone, You have heard this many years ago, that God proclaimed that He was going to come and dwell amongst the people. And now let me give you a good news that this God has made himself known through his son, Jesus. He took flesh and he dwelled among us. But at this passage now, he comes a step further. And this is the beautiful thing. He comes a step further that God is revealing himself to the individual believer. And he's revealing himself to you and me, to all of those who believe in them, and also takes residence in our hearts, in our lives. What a beautiful thing. It's speechless. It just, words cannot describe, cannot explain such a shift, such a change indeed. You have many other passages in the New Testament that speaks about this truth. Uh, Paul says, for we are the temple of the living God. Um, we live and walk among them and God will be their God and they will be my people. All of these statements that we, we will we can find through throughout the Bible. Revelation chapter 14 to chapter 20. It says that I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will go in and eat with him and he with me. Now remember, this is the exalted Jesus. This is glorified Jesus Christ. He is in heaven, but he still is able to knock at your door, the door of your heart and the door of my heart through the help of the Holy Spirit that is dwelling in us. And that is the big thing that John also trying to uh, help us capture, that it is through the Holy Spirit that God the Father and the Son is making a dwelling into our hearts. Um, looking through that passage, reading through them, we pick up some of the roles of the Holy Spirit, which is very important. Um, it says the Holy Spirit, um, it is um, that exposes the sin of the world. So he convicts the world of their sin. He also helps believers in their witness to the world. And he also strengths and comforts them by the presence, by his presence that he is with us. He further explained the significance of Jesus' person and ministry, functioning as the agent of all truth. You know, I don't know if you have had the experience at all, 
But often when I read scripture, it's not very clear to me. But from time to time, I pray and I ask the Holy Spirit to help me. Because this is what it's saying. He is the spirit of truth. He is the God who will reveal all the truths about God. And where do we find the truth? In God's word. And often you read a passage, you read and read, and then at another time, the Lord just reveals things to you, reveals the truth through the Holy Spirit that you haven't seen it before. And it's so important that we acknowledge that part of God, that we acknowledge that the, the Spirit is there to help us, the Spirit is there to guide us, the Spirit is there to strengthen us. It is not by our own strength, but it is by God's strength that we can do the things that are set in front of us. And when we feel um, weak, when we feel lack of confidence, we can go to the Holy Spirit. We can ask God to give us the power, to give us the knowledge. Elsewhere it says, do not worry about the words that you will say. The Holy Spirit will help you. The Holy Spirit will remind you. Well, it will remind us if we read God's word, if we know scripture into our heart and into our mind. So he reveals the truth to us. I want to focus on a aspect that is um, important, I think, to us. In verse, in verse 17 of chapter 14, it says, Jesus assures his followers for he lives in you, but also he lives, he will be with you. So he lives, he is with us, he also lives in the disciple, he lives in us. And that there are two different important differences that we need to understand to what Jesus is trying to explain to us. And let me try to make sense here. I hope my, my thinking um, uh, helps us to understand here. In the passage, chapter 12, um, Jesus is speaking and um, speaking about judgment, he's speaking about the price that he has to pay, the suffering and everything. But then he says this, he says, but when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. Elsewhere, Jesus also said that it is better for me to go to the Father, because only by me going to the Father will you be able to have the promise of my Father, of a comforter, of the Holy Spirit. Now, why do you think Jesus has said those things? You see, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is very important. Whereas while Jesus was in the earth, he was confined by a geographical place. Very he was not able to be in many places at once. But the ministry of the Holy Spirit is different. The Holy Spirit, Scripture teaches us that He can live and dwell in us in, in spontaneously. So while He is with me, He is also with you wherever you are, in whatever country you may be, in whatever place you may be. The Holy Spirit is able to dwell in in us and be with us and through that Jesus says that when I rise I will draw all men to me all women to me all families to me because through the Holy Spirit we can all come together wherever we are we can come to know and live and dwell with God together. And now there's two aspects which I mentioned earlier. God is with us and God is in us. God is with us in a sense there is that ex 
exterior, external aspect that God is with us. He could be with us in our church meeting. He could be with us in uh, other associations that we are gathering together. And I guess that's another important why we get together, because the Holy Spirit is with us. And that aspect also we can pick up in the Old Testament, where God came to dwell and He was present amongst them. He was with them. But then there's that beauty of the Holy Spirit that also have that ministry, that He dwells in us. He is with us anywhere and everywhere we go. He is with us. He is in us. And that, that is tremendous. That is one of the things that makes, makes the relationship, the trust in God that, that we believe different to anything I've known before. God dwells with me. Wherever I go, God is with me. Hallelujah. I can praise Him right now and know that He is listening to me. I can sing to Him. I can worship Him. I can pray and I can ask Him for help. And He is here with me. Same as He is with you, should you believe in Him. What a tremendous truth. What a tremendous strength that is indeed. And it's something that we can draw in these difficult times. Yes, we are asked to stay on, on the, in the house and not be out unless we need to. But the tremendous truth that John is revealing to us, this triune God has done it all. Ladies and gentlemen, if we believe in Jesus, if we believe that he is the only way, as John said, the only way to the Father, we also accept the Holy Spirit through our faith in Jesus. And God the Father, God the Son, will make their dwelling in us through the Spirit. The wholeness of God, oh hallelujah, is it, is it too big for us to understand? Of course it is. If it wasn't, I might not want to believe in a, in a God that is so simple, in a God that is, is nailed into the wall. I want to believe in God that is all mysterious, that is all glorious, but yet He first decided to come and reveal himself to me, reveal yourself to you, irrespective of how simple we may be, irrespective of uh, how little education we may have. God decided to come and make himself known to you and make himself known to me, that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, Scripture says, shall be saved. What a truth that is ladies and gentlemen. And God works in these days to comfort you and to comfort me through the means of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what is doing the work amongst us. We have Jesus who is interceding from the right hand of the Father and we have the Spirit who's revealing all truths about God, who's revealing all truths about Jesus, who's revealing the mission of Jesus that he has for you and me for the church. We go to the Holy Spirit. Paul says, ask to be filled with the Spirit daily. Lord, fill me with your spirit. Lord, give me wisdom so I understand the truth of your word. So I understand, Lord, where I am with you. Lord, strengthen my faith through your spirit. It is tremendous. It is tremendous how amazing, how great God is. His majesty, his glory, this all creating God has decided to come dwell in your heart and in my heart. John, just bring that further step that he is going to the individual, not only as a group. He is with us when we meet together, but he is in us. That right now, as I am speaking to you, I know the Spirit of the Lord is stirring my heart. Hallelujah, what a tremendous God it is. Praise be to his name. You know, 
Jesus at the cross, he said, right before he gave his last breath, he said, it is finished. It is finished, Father. I came to accomplish my journey and it is done. And he, right in that moment, there was such power that was given through that cross, through, through Jesus. And the curtain which you used to represent where the presence of God used to be, as we spoke from the Old Testament. That's what they believed in the temple. No more. Torn from the top to the bottom. Torn. Presence of God has left the building. And as Paul says, God has made a promise. He will not dwell in houses built with the hand of man anymore. Jesus made the way. And the Spirit of God now decides to dwell in your heart and in my heart. That is the God that we, that is the God that we serve, ladies and gentlemen. Give him a chance. And if you are struggling today, simply just go in prayer and ask, ask this God to come to your heart and help you with whatever difficulty you may have. Remember, He can be in your heart. He is where you are. He is around you. He is with you. God bless you and have a good week, a blessed one. Amen.